Politics. 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 What is Georgism? If you thought politics couldn't get any more interesting than archaic definitions and arbitrary ideological spectrums, today we're going to talk about taxes. So hold on to your seats or whatever. It turns out that taxes are complicated, with tiny little laws written for almost any transaction. Just look at the value added tax, also called VAT. This is a small charge of about 20% on stuff you buy that means that some of the money you spend on that new phone goes to the government. Simple enough, but most governments think it would be unfair to tax necessary things like fruit and vegetables and water, so these things have no VAT, unless they're processed in some way or prepared in a meal, which means you're not just paying for the food, but for the work someone did to prepare it, so you pay a different rate of VAT. Also, the government encourages people to buy children's car seats and wind turbines, so you pay less VAT on them. Also, lots of people think that luxury goods like Ferrari should have lots of VAT on them, also, at this point, it should be clear that even one kind of tax isn't simple, and when you're trying to set up a business, this can be a lot to wrap your head around, even though the men in black don't seem to think that this is much of an excuse. That's where our good old friends slash enemies, the economic liberals, come in with a way to make business easier for people, with fewer government tax laws. In fact, their idea called Georgism suggests only one tax, on land. Now, simplicity for business isn't the only justification. The idea behind taxing only land, bearing in mind that you'll probably want to tax it more if you're getting rid of all the other taxes, is that natural resources can be shared amongst members of society, and one of the best ways of doing that is by sharing out shares of the wealth that entrepreneurs are making from the land. This system is also supposed to discourage inefficient use of land, since, say, a farmer who's not farming their land would still have to pay tax on their land, so they'd be encouraged to sell the land to someone who actually wants to farm the land. It would also discourage landlords from keeping houses empty to push up rent prices. If you're only left with wealthy people owning the fields and such, the idea goes that these wealthy people are going to be the only ones getting taxed, rather than the poor people who don't own any land, greatly reducing economic inequality. I'd hate for you to think that the Georgist mindset is fixated on fields and farmers. Nowadays, the land tax would probably be applied to most common property, from the land to the sea to the air we breathe with pollution also being taxed to take into account that everyone breathes the same air. You might think that this tax would be hard to enforce, but it definitely seems like worrying about fewer laws would make the taxman's job a lot easier. Simple. 